Hey guys, even here, and in this video, we have a couple of interesting things to talk about. First off, we wanted to start with uh, Sean Ray talking about Sean Roden and the whole whole fuss it created afterwards. I'm sure you followed everything. This was like the biggest thing uh, about it. Like a lot of bodybuilders and a lot of people from the industry talked about uh, this whole thing on RX Muscle. They, they they ripped Sean Ray a new one. And this is only one video. There is a lot of other bodybuilders who felt pretty much the same way about uh, not only what Sean Ray said right now about Sean Roden, but also like his overall negativity towards bodybuilders, bodybuilding community. When he's commentating the shows, he's always focused on the negative stuff about bodybuilders. He's criticizing everybody way too heavily. And I guess it would make sense if he was like a YouTuber and that was his job to criticize. But he's a commentator. He should promote the sport, make it positive. Not put it down and talk negative about the athletes. So what happened lately, yesterday actually, is Sean Ray creating a apology video. I'm apologizing uh, if I offended any of you guys by some of the words that might have been taken out of context uh, and also maybe even the timing. But all the guys out there coming out with videos, with their opinions, um, it sounds, if you don't like me, you don't like me. <laughs> you know, I don't expect to try to win anybody back. And that was a part of the apology video. You can watch the whole thing on his Instagram and tell me what you think because a lot of people feel like it wasn't exactly genuine. And uh, you can consider myself one of those people. I don't feel like this was really what he meant. I don't know what was the reason for uh, saying all that bad stuff about Sean Roden. I mean, like coming up with something that has nothing to do with truth. He didn't explain that in this video. Uh, he said that uh, no, he did not uh, know for a fact that Sean Roden had a uh, recreational drug problem. He was an addict, that's what he said uh, in that original uh, interview with RX Muscle. And then in this apology video he said that that's not true. So uh, he never explained why would he even come up with that. And uh, why would he apologize now? I mean, it just doesn't really make sense. It seems like, I don't know, I feel like this guy has some sociopathic traits. I mean, it's one thing when you are just like some YouTuber from some country across the seas and you have a couple of thousand subscribers and you talk about whatever. It's different than when you are a part of the industry, when you compete and you know these guys personally and you talk bad about somebody who just passed away. So that, that's, that. I mean, that requires somebody who has like zero empathy. So you either accept Sean Ray for a sociopath that he is or you don't. Anyways, this was his apology video. You can take a look at it and tell me what you think in the comment section. Do you think this was genuine? Do you think he's actually sorry for the pain he caused to his family and, and his friends? He never apologized to other bodybuilders because, yeah, they offended him quite a bit. But those guys cried in their interview with Rx Muscle. I mean, they were also very, very offended and hurt by the words that Sean Ray said about their dear friend. So, yeah, this caused a lot of problems. And a couple of months ago, maybe a little bit more, maybe like a year ago, I don't know if you guys caught this, but Jake Wood had some negative things to say about Sean Ray. Not really about him, but to him. He criticized him. Uh, he, he actually told him in an interview at the Digital Muscle Media that he should not be criticizing bodybuilders that way that he's doing. That he is a promoter. He's not a judge. He's there to promote the sport, to make it more positive, more uh, attractive to the audience. Not to rip the guys apart. No. So let me play the part of that video as well. Bodybuilding is a sport of criticism, and I think uh, sometimes the athletes... They are in a place of vulnerability when you criticize their hard work um, and, and you recognize that some of them aren't in shape or some of them are disproportionate and you bring, it magnifies it when you hear it from somebody like myself. Exactly, but you know, when you come into these, uh, when you're commentating, you're, you're not in the judge's chair. Yeah. You know, you know, you're kind of an extension of the promoter and as a promoter, you know what our job is. You know, to make the athletes look good. Right. You know, to make fans out of the people that are watching the show. You know, we, we want to build up the sport, you know, so as your commentator, that's what we need you to do. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah, the negative standpoints, no, leave those behind. You know, you have your own opinion, your social media is a great place to, you know, bring that up, but, or perhaps sometimes on digital muscle if, if it's pertinent, mm -hmm. but, man, I, when it comes to our shows, you know, 
you're there to support the athlete. Absolutely. And sometimes... There you go. Very well said by Jake Wood. And unfortunately, Sean Ray didn't even let him finish the sentence. But he got his point across. I hope Sean Ray will actually accept this and, and actually change some things in the future. Because apparently... Jake Wood is not gonna fire him. Maybe he will after what happened with Sean Roden, uh, this whole situation. I don't know, but probably not. Because I, I get it, in a way. I mean, Sean Ray is a Hall of Famer. He's one of the best bodybuilders from the 90s. He's, he's an expert. Uh, you, you, can, you can't deny that. He probably doesn't follow bodybuilding as much as, as, as closely as, for example, myself and some other YouTubers, like modern bodybuilding. He doesn't really know all the names and all the history behind all of these guys, so he, made, he makes some mistakes when he talks about uh, who the guys are and where they're coming from and stuff like that. But overall, like he is an expert and he's very well spoken. That is something. Yeah, that, that's very important. And also he has a lot of experience. So he's a great, uh, he, he's a good man for this job. Who, who else would do this job better, really, uh, from the other guys who also did this job before? So there isn't a lot of good commentators out there, but uh, if they tried, they probably could have find somebody better. But as for now, you have Sean Ray, and uh, I would just like if he changed these couple of things. Yeah, I get it, he's probably a sociopath, he doesn't give a, he doesn't, he doesn't care about these bodybuilders, I mean, he doesn't really care about them personally, but if he just did his job better, everything would be much better, so I hope something will change. What do you guys think about Sean Ray? Do you like him? Do you hate him? <laughs> what are your thoughts are? Tell me in the comment section down below. Alright, how about we end the drama right there and talk about something more positive? And that's the physique updates of a couple of bodybuilders who are very well known, some of them are really great competitors, some of them are good competitors. For example, right here, let's say we have a good competitor. He is great, but in the IBB Elite Pro. This is Michael Krizo, of course. Uh, he is not competing in the IBB Pro League, which is uh, the highest level of, of bodybuilding competitions. Uh, he is an Elite Pro, and uh, that's not really a pro. I don't know, I guess he would turn pro in the IBB Pro League if he really wanted to, but apparently he has no intentions of doing that, uh, not anytime soon. And that is very unfortunate, because this guy looks absolutely incredible, amazing. He has a lot of followers, a lot of fans, and uh, he is incredibly large. This guy is so big, uh, he's actually quite tall, he's about 6 foot, 6 foot 1, and he's weighing right now 135 pounds, uh, sorry, kilos in these photos, which is about uh, 315 pounds, something like that. So, I mean, for a guy of that height, it's not really that much, but... Guys, I mean, consider this, yes, he looks incredibly big right here, very, very round, especially for a guy of his height, but uh, he didn't really gain an incredible amount of muscle in such a short time span, he just got a little bit fatter and uh, quite a bit watery, and he filled up his glycogen stores, uh, he competed very recently, uh, and he was in shape, he wasn't like super crazy peeled, but about like how many, four or five weeks ago, let's say five weeks ago, he competed at the Arnold Classic and he was in shape, contest shape, so in like five weeks, how much muscle can you actually gain? Well, let me tell you, not a lot, not a lot. And uh, also when you're dieting, when you're getting in shape, you lose some muscle. So in those five weeks, he probably regained the muscle that he lost and he again uh, added the, the glycogen back to the muscle stores, also gained some water and, and some fat. But here's the thing, um, uh, he doesn't really lose a lot of muscle when he's dieting because he never really went to that super crisp conditioning. He doesn't really get like Mike Munzer uh, kind of conditioning. He gets kind of conditioned, like he gets fine, you know, conditioning is fine. And that's enough, you know, he doesn't really have to suffer too much to get uh, to like super, super low body fat percent because even with higher body fat percent then he could potentially get to, he wins the shows, because he is by far the best IBB Elite Pro competitor, and he knows that, he knows that, if he went to IBB Pro League, then he would have to diet much harder, and he would have to do his off-season way harder, because for a guy who is 6 foot 1, weighing 315 pounds, I mean, that's not enough, that's not enough, for example, you have James Hollingshead, who is about 315 pounds, in the off season, and he is like five foot nine. This photo right here is when he was a little bit over three hundred pounds in his last off season, but that's not him right now. He competed at the Mr. Olympia, 
where he did poorly, let's say, let's put it that way. Considering the fact that he won two pro shows almost back to back last year, some people, actually many top commentators, uh, let's say experts or former bodybuilders uh, or current bodybuilders, had him uh, in that top six, actually, yeah. But he failed, he was like uh, 12th or something like that. And guys, don't get me wrong, I'm not talking bad about him. This happens to everybody. Everybody comes in off sometimes. You can't always be spot on. But, uh, you know, saying stuff like this is actually positive. Because I expected him to do much, much better. If I was like, he, did he was 12, that's great, great job. It would mean that I didn't expect much from him. Me personally, I expected him to do much, much better. I also thought he has a chance of cracking the top 6. And I think he actually has the chance to do that. Even with this, uh, even, even this year. But he was way too flat. He talked about the reasons why this happened. And it's because he was dieting way too hard for many weeks before the show. And he was afraid to, to say anything to his coach. He trusted Patrick Tour and uh, he didn't really go that well. He should have trusted his, his gut. He should have told this to his coach. And they would have taken it slowly and he would be bigger and fuller and not this flat. And he would definitely place much, much higher. Was top 6 actually possible? Probably not this year, but maybe like top 8, top 7, maybe. If everything was perfect, it was far away from perfect. But guys, this happens to everybody. I'm sure he learned a valuable lesson. And I'm sure this, 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 this hurt him a lot, mentally. I'm sure he was down for a while. I don't know how long it took him to, to get out of that hole, but I'm sure it affected him. But apparently it seems, based on his vlog videos and his Instagram posts, that he's back on it and he's actually taking it very very uh, he, he's taking a very smart approach right now he's doing a reverse dieting kind of stuff and he's growing slowly so here's a photo of himself he is 280 pounds right now and it's been quite a while since the mr olympia so if he wanted to he could have been 320 by now if he really pushed the food if he did a lot of junk food but he says that he doesn't really like too much junk food he says that he eats clean and he's taking it slowly, he's increasing his food very, very gradually. And I think that's the, the smart way about it. And I'm sure he will make a lot of progress until next year's, uh, whichever show he decides to do, and then Mr. Olympia, I'm sure he will qualify. And I'm sure next year his result is going to be significantly improved. Nick Walker has the same approach, like James Hollings said. Before the Mr. Olympia, Nick Walker, even though it was his first Mr. Olympia ever, said that he's aiming for top 3 to top 5. So he said that his minimum result is going to be the finals. Exactly what he achieved. He achieved 5th spot. And I feel like he was disappointed in himself. He thought he was going to do better. And he could have, you know, he was 5th, he was but he could have easily been 4th instead of Hunter Labrada. And he maybe could have even been, like, third, instead of uh, Hari Chopin. Could have he been second or first? No, no, I think he, he, still, he still has a lot of work to do to be on that level. But uh, he was right there, like he said, from third to fifth spot. And even though James was 12th, and it was, both for the, both of these guys, it was their first Mr. Olympia, Mr. Olympia debut, I feel like Nick Walker was even more disappointed, even though he achieved an amazing result, crazy success. Guys, 27, I believe right now, he's a youngster, first Mr. Olympia, he turned pro last year, basically. And in about one year, he managed to turn pro, to win the New York Pro, to win the Arnold Classic, and to crack the top 5, to be a Mr. Olympia finalist. Which also means he, aside from getting a lot of money, for this placement, he also is qualified automatically for the next year's Mr. Olympia. So this success is incredible. I, I hope he's aware of it, but uh, he doesn't stop grinding. He basically uh, continued doing cardio, continued dieting. He didn't change anything. He says that his only uh, rest from bodybuilding is just mentally not being focused on a show in, in a recent future. Like just mentally not being in a prep Everything else, like diet, training, cardio, everything stays the same. He loves the lifestyle. And that's why Nick Walker is improving in such an amazing, fast rate. And uh, I think it's only a matter of time before this guy wins the Mr. Olympia. 
he isn't perfect, he has flaws, structural flaws, but he's a hard worker, he grows like wheat, and uh, he has, I think, enough tools to actually become the next Mr. Olympia winner, and if you talk about the mindset, he has definitely crazy mindset, crazy mentality, I think he probably has the best mindset from all the other competitors at the Mr. Olympia stage, uh, he probably has one of the best abilities to grow muscle, as far as the structure, he's not exactly super blessed in that area, and I'm saying super blessed compared to the other top 5 competitors, but as far as like the rest of the Olympians, he's also very good at that too, I mean, so can he win the Mr. Olympia? I think he can. I don't really see why not. If you guys do see why not, or you agree with me, tell me in the comment section down below. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, guys, please give it a like. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much, guys, for watching and for following the channel. All the best and bye-bye.